Sun going down here in Falmouth. The bats coming alive for the Commodores, leading 10-2 as we head to the fifth inning. Josh Hess was given a lot to work with in the bottom half of the fourth inning. So we now turn it over to one of his broadcast partners here for the Falmouth Commodores from Boston University, Chris Pichet. It is all yours. Top of the fifth inning in Falmouth, the Commodores, their bats really exploding for five runs in the bottom of the fourth. And now Cole Sands will trot out to the mound for his third inning of work. He relieved his Florida State teammate after Holton went two innings. And they've been doing that back and forth after Sands has returned from Team USA. Well, he's got he's got a lead here. He's got an eight-run lead, and uh, he let his offense uh, really take off that inning. Lots of hits, and the offense really taking off. And there's a defensive replacement for the Commodores. Tristan Gray will be at third base in replace of Matt McLaughlin. And now Robbie Metz for the Wareham Gateman will dig in. First pitch from Sands is a ball that runs away from the righty. A long wait in the dugout for Cole Sands as he let his offense do some work. The 1 0 is a fastball for a called strike. Good heat from Sands to even the count at ones. And this is the second night in a row where the third baseman has been replaced. The 1 1 is cut on and hit foul to the right side. Metz is a utility man from George Washington who came in to replace Austin Wade out in right field after Wade was plunked in just the second batter of the game for Holton. The one two, cut on and hit softly to second. Lippet goes behind the bag and now a throw to get the speedy Metz. That was a bang bang play. Metz really runs well down to first. As a great example of the speed of Metz, just a routine ground ball to Lippet at second. And he looks up and he has to make a quick throw and that play at first very close. Smile on the face a little bit. I didn't think he realized it was gonna be that close. Yeah, he, he had no idea and the Commodores have a lot of speed up at the, up the top of their lineup as well. And you can tell Mets really hustling and Lippitt just fielded that ground ball as you mentioned like he normally would not anticipating the speed for Mets. Uh, a lot of credit right there to Mets. You're down eight runs, you're trying to make something happen, and they are hustling right out of the box on a routine ground ball to second. Well, that's what hustle's all about right there. First pitch from Sands is a called strike, and now a fastball that catches the outer half, and he's ahead 0-2. Two pitch is a fastball that just misses. And it's a pinch hitter. It's Dominic Miroglio. And the one two pitch of Miroglio is swung on and missed. So a strikeout from Sands, who collects his fifth of the ball game. Yeah, he's he's really utilizing his fastball and locating it very well. The fifth strikeout of the game for Cole Sands and he picks it up on the outer half of the plate and just spotting his fastball very well as he picks up his strikeout. First pitch from Sands to Gavin Sheets is fouled off to the left side. Sheets walked back in the third and had a sack fly in the first and coming into tonight is just one of his last 14. The 0-1 is a fastball that just misses to the lefty. Sands out of the lineup. The 1-1 is a broken bat dribbler that will just go foul. We've seen quite a few broken bats tonight. Well, Sands, I'll tell you one thing, he loves to come inside. He does on that pitch on Sheets, and Sheets has to go in the dugout to get another piece of lumber as that bat has got some splinters in it. And today during batting practice, as the Commodores were taking their swings, Matt McLaughlin broke a bat in one of the last swings of, of the warm-ups, and a bunch of the Wareham Gatemen were giving him a hard time and says, that what happen that's what happens when you go to Kansas. And so a lot of good kind of... <laughs> 
I guess, rivalries, you could say, between guys in the Big 12 and really any of the top conferences where a lot of players will come in. Now the one-two pitch is a fastball for a called strike. Sheets does not like it, but Sands loves it as he trots off the mound with his sixth strikeout. And the Commodores are up 10-2 to in between the fifth, and we'll head to the bottom of the fifth at Gov Fuller. Brown, Columbia, Cornell, Dartmouth, Harvard, Penn, Princeton, and Yale. Synonymous with academic and athletic excellence, the Ivies have the broadest intercollegiate programs in the country. That means more teams, sports, and student athletes than any other intercollegiate athletic conference. These men and women combine national competitive success with the best academic records in the NCAA. Experience the Ivy League yourself at ivyleaguesports.com. No trip to Cape Cod is complete without a visit to the Cape League Hall of Fame and Museum. We'll start with our Cape Cod Baseball League patio. Inside the museum, there are the plaques for the inductees in our Hall of Fame. You have a managerial case with the eight current managers that played in the Cape League. And there are display cases featuring memorabilia from every single team. We've got an 1869 scorecard here in the museum. Relive Cape League history today. 27, Christian Talker. Bottom of the fifth inning in Falmouth. The Commodores are on top 10 to two after a five run bottom of the fourth. And it's a new pitcher for the Wareham Gateman. Christian Togner from Brown University. And this will be his sixth appearance for Wareham. ERA of 3.6, 10 innings pitched. He's given up 12 hits, seven strikeouts, and only one walk. And it's a new and it's a new catcher for the Gateman. It's Moroglio who hit for Shaver in the top half of the inning, and Tristan Gray will be the batter for the Commodores, who replaced McLaughlin at third. First pitch to the lefty out of Rice is a ball low. Gray, one of the several returners to this Commodores team. The 1-0 misses inside. And talking with Gray earlier this week, he just, when I asked him, he kind of just laughed and said, of course, when I asked him how much better it is to play for a team that really is just winning a lot more this season as the 2-0 is hit foul to the right side. The Commodores come in tonight with 16 wins, which is as many as they had last year for the entire season. So the winning ways are much different in Falmouth, and Tristan Gray just said it's much easier to come to the ballpark every day when the team is hitting well and obviously winning games as the 2-1 is hit just foul down the right side. Yeah, six out of their last seven games, and they lost a tough one last night. But they're right back on top where they want to be tonight so far in this ball game. 10 to 2 here in the bottom of the fifth. And bats really exploding back in that fourth inning. The 2-2 two -two is hit on a line, and that will get down for a base hit in front of the center fielder Bartosik. The ball gets away from him slightly, but not enough for Gray to advance. Another single for the Commodores as they keep uh, racking up the hits in this game. Michael, and maybe you'd think after a five-run explosion in the bottom of the fourth that the bats might go quiet here in the fifth, but the exact opposite as Gray hits a hard single to start the offensive attack, and now the top of the order is up with Mike Gigliotti, who has two doubles on the night. You don't want to stay f away from the inner half of the plate with Gigliotti. He's proven he likes that ball in there, so if I'm a pitching against him, I want to keep the ball away. Two doubles, both of them, down the right field line. He has three of the 10 runs for the Commodores. And the first pitch to Gigliotti is fouled back just to the left of us. And you mentioned going in on Gigliotti can be dangerous with his ability to really pull an inside pitch. And he, he really isn't a guy that is going to hit a lot of home runs, but he definitely you know, ha has that ability to hit the power alleys out in down the line and right and also in right center as that pitch is dropped in for a called strike to Gigliotti. Well, we saw it last night. We've seen it twice here tonight. He really keeps his, his hands inside the ball, and uh, some, some uh, hitters get 
tied up. He likes it in there. The 0-2 pitch is hit out to right center field. It gets down for a hit, and it's his third hit of the night. And Tristan Gray will stop at second, so the first two men are aboard with back-to-back -back singles in the bottom of the fifth. Well, they continue to pound him inside, and he continues to get base hits. His third hit of the game. And a smile on his face as He's feeling really good at the plate right now. There's the groove, it's fastball, inner half, and boom, right there, keeps his hands in. And he drives it into right field. The 11th hit of the game for Falmouth. Now Deacon Lippitt comes to the plate. He has RBIs in his last three games for the Commodores after going hitless in his first game. Lippitt was the last player to join the Commodores, if you don't count Sands, who left for a quick stint with Team USA, Lippitt took a little bit of time off after the long season with the Florida Gators. And we had Brady Singer. Brady Singer kind of was talking a little bit about his ability, Lippitt's ability to play on an everyday basis. That pitch is tapped to the second baseman, charging and now flipping over to the pitcher who covers for the first out. So runners advance to second and third. And Brady Singer, he really kind of just preached how good Lippitt is. He's playing on an everyday basis. He did not miss a single game with Florida Nobody, this year. And really just a workhorse. He's got a, a great ability. Kind of some would compare him to Dustin Pedroia. Can just grind out hits and is going to work hard. And that's really paid off for him so far with Falmouth. Well, Jeff Trundy talked about Lippitt before the game. And he just said he's a player. He comes in here every day ready to play, focused, and uh, plays the game the right way. Now it's J.J. Matajevic, the first pitch, almost hits the lefty out of Arizona. And he, too, had a lengthy spring season with his team. Arizona Wildcats losing in the College World Series to Coastal Carolina. And Matajevic, who's a returning Commodore, didn't waste any time getting down to Falmouth as he was here less than a week after his team was defeated as the 1-0 is upstairs for a ball. Where else do you want to be during the summer? You want to be on the Cape? <laughs> Maybe you're right, though. He didn't take much of a break and uh, couldn't wait to get to Falmouth and uh, get be part of this ball club. Now the 2-0 pitch is hit high to center field. Tossic tracks back and makes the catch. Great tags, and the throw will go into third, but not in time to get Gigliotti. Gigliotti advances to third, and Gray scores, and the Commodores now have extended their lead to nine and lead 11-2. Matajevic doing what he wants to do here, just getting the ball up in the air, deep enough to score Gray and another RBI for him. Here's the swing, just trying to elevate it. He's able to do it on that swing and deep enough to score Gray with the 11th run of the game. The switch hitting Josh Watson out of TCU comes up. That'll be from the left side against the righty and the pitch is upstairs for a ball. Watson 0 for 3 tonight, but does have an RBI. The 1-0, just missing low. And a good eye from Watson. The Commodores come into the game tonight, leading the Cape Cod League in walks. So a team that really has a good ability to see a lot of pitches and a very disciplined approach. And it's something that Coach Trundy has acknowledged he loves about this group of guys. Well, they've, they've worked themselves into hitters' counts, 2-1, and 3-1, and, and being patient enough to get into a position where they're going to get a good pitch to hit, and they've been able to get those pitches, and they've executed their swings tonight. They have done an excellent job. The 3-0, Watson taking all the way, and it's a called strike at the knees. The Commodores, have, the Commodores have now scored in every inning. They have won this inning and are trying to get another as Gigliotti stands on third, and the 3-1 is spoiled off to the left side. Take a look at the scoreboard and Falmouth scoring in every inning. The 3 2 is once again fouled off to the left side. Commodores grabbed one in the first, three in the second, and they had their big inning output 
or run output, I should say, with five in the fourth. The three two to Watson is tapped softly to the right side. Pitcher grabs it and throws on to first to get Watson, but the Commodores do score a run and lead 11 to two. Chris Pichet, you represented Falmouth and the BU Terriers very well here today. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the summer here on the Cape. Chris, doing a great job. Ken, I'm gonna join you. I, I think I missed back. a few things in the last couple of <laughs> innings. <laughs>